Seafarer is sort of, it's sort of disguised as a treasure hunting company or a marine salvage company. But in reality, like I say, it's a tech company. It is 100% tech company. Companies that do this now, they try and salvage you know, artifacts or things of value off of these sites. If you understand how they do that now, magging, creating a thousand targets in a little area, and then over the next you know, 40 days of dive time that you get in each individual year, trying to then dive each one of those, determine if there's anything there to go, go after, and then you spend the next several years trying to determine where on each of those sites you dive. It is a ridiculously inefficient process. It just is. It's a big scratch off, and you're completely at the mercy of the elements, and you only have limited time in the year where you can physically get out there to do these things. Everything points to the fact that if you want to do this and do it successfully and not just rely on complete luck, you have to have technology to allow you to do it. For me, the light bulb moment was understanding that this allows you to take away all of that inefficiency and replace it with a really efficient scientific process. And that is something you can depend on for a long-term success. I am Peter Enzio. I'm an investor. I've been involved for about a year. I've been a tech investor for a long time, but I've also had a love for the ocean and for history. I've done a bunch of this stuff in the past on, on my own boat, just you know, recreationally, and I find the whole thing fascinating to start with, but the, the meld of technology with this niche industry is what really is compelling to me. So for me, I was, I was introduced by one of the other investors that's here who's also a tech investor. And he brought me in because he knew that I invested in tech and because he knew it was unique. And so I came into it with, you know, kind of eyes wide open, but open to, to what they were doing and how unique it may be or how, how unique it may not be and found that it was truly unique and got into it really quickly and progressed from there to coming into the weekly meetings and then progress from there to being a board ad advisor as well. So I've taken on more and more of a role as we've gone through and as I've seen the kind of the, the progression of especially the technology side of things. It's such a unique tech company, it's not even, not even funny. The fascinating thing about this company is, again, the technology, but more so than just the fact that they have a unique technology is the process by which it's developed. And good, high technology is always developed by a scientific process that's self-skeptical, let's say, and methodical. And everything about this is being done in the right way. And if, if I didn't see that it was being done the right way, I wouldn't be involved. <laughs> so, so to me, as long as the, the technology has an addressable market, and hopefully a niche market, that's not as competitive, and is being developed in the right way, and at the right pace, it's something that's really compelling to me. I want to be involved in it. And I, you know, at this point, you couldn't offer me 100% return to sell my shares, period. Like, because I can see where the trajectory is going. I can see what, what the opportunities are that exist for this specific set of technology and where it's going from here and how much more optimization can be, can be brought to the table on top of what's already happened over the last year, which is leaps and bounds from where it started. This technology is being applied to a really unique niche market right now, which is essentially pinpointing shallow, shallow deposits of bullion in the ocean and on the ocean floor. And there isn't a whole lot of competition for that to start, and it's archaic the way it's done now. And so to overcome that, the technology is the answer, and the development of the technology is the answer. And putting these guys in touch with the, the right people to help advise them to move that forward is one of the ways that we do that. Ensuring that all of the resources that are needed to, to continue that development of high technology are there too. And ensuring that the pathway that they're going down as well, from the standpoint of what an investor would look for, and from the standpoint of what's let's say practically important is, is of the utmost importance as well for the technology side. For the operation side, it's a whole different story because this is essentially salvage that we're talking about. But the salvage side of it is really, a, it's precipitated by the technology because there are hundreds of these sites, thousands of these sites that exist, truly, no joke. And the technology allows you to pinpoint on every one of those things every one of those sites exactly where you extract the most value with the, with the least 
amount of negative impact on those sites, which you want. You want to be able to go into these sites and not spend a decade diving them, trying to figure out where you dig for the things that you're trying to extract. You want to be able to go in and surgically remove whatever it is that you know you can pull out without having a, a negative implication on the site, which is an archaeological site. And that's one of the big differences between those, the, the, what we're doing here as opposed to what's always been done in this niche space. So on the operational side, the salvage piece of it requires the, the, the resources, the personnel, the guidance, all of those other things. But on the technology side, that's applicable for the long term and it's applicable to every site. <laughs> Seafarer is sort of, it's sort of disguised as a treasure hunting company or a marine salvage company. But in reality, like I say, it's a tech company. It is a 100% tech company. Companies that do this now, they try and salvage you know, artifacts or things of value off of these sites. If you understand how they do that now, magging, creating a thousand targets in a little area, and then over the next you know, 40 days of dive time that you get in each individual year, trying to then dive each one of those, determine if there's anything there to go, go after, and then you spend the next several years trying to determine where on each of those sites you dive, it is a ridiculously inefficient process. It just is. It's a big scratch off, and you're completely at the mercy of the elements and you only have limited time in the year where you can physically get out there to do these things. Everything points to the fact that if you want to do this and do it successfully and not just rely on complete luck, you have to have technology to allow you to do it. For me, the light bulb moment was understanding that this allows you to take away all of that inefficiency and replace it with a really efficient scientific process. And that is something you can depend on for a long-term success. Second, the second light bulb moment for me was actually reading a white paper that describes in detail the technology and especially the software behind the technology. If I wasn't convinced beforehand seeing everything else after reading that paper, I was 100% convinced. It is on par with any scholarly article or paper you'd ever read. And it was created right in house by the technological teams that, are, that, are, that have built this technology from scratch. It is super unique, there's just nobody else doing it. Tim is a special, unique, brilliant guy, but the team that he, that he has built, fostered, and guides is also incredible. They really are. What they do here with what they have is pretty, pretty incredible. And it, what's funny is nobody knows. Nobody knows about it. Nobody knows what they're building. Nobody knows how unique it truly is and how it will change what it currently exists in these, in these spaces nor the applications in a bunch of other industries which are completely unrelated. They just nobody knows because we're in Melbourne, Florida. We're not in Silicon Valley where <laughs> the valuation a year ago would have been 100 million. You know, it's just that's what it is. It's a different it's a different it's a different situation because of how they're situated geographically speaking. Nobody knows Melbourne, Florida. Nobody knows the the gem that it is here and what it what it has to offer the techno technology world, and especially the startup world, they just don't know because who comes to Melbourne, Florida? The shareholder group is, is pretty pivotal because most of your kind of ancillary resources come from the shareholders, not just funding, but also resources uh, in terms of guidance and in terms of advisory um, commitments. Those things are all really important because you can't just, you can't just rely on one mindset to move forward properly. The best is if you have a, a, a hive mind of well, well situated individuals who have good experience, who have good resources, and who can vet the decisions that, that, that take us forward. You, get, you end up with a better decision by doing so. And there's always been a good willingness to be able to, to, to take the, that type of feedback from shareholders and apply it to the decisions that move us forward. And that's really important. If you don't have that, then you end up with a situation where there's no transparency for shareholders. You end up with a situation where shareholders don't know whether or not the pathway that's being taken is the right one. It's a, it's a tricky process. So, it, so I've always been happy with the, with the fact that there is that willingness because there's a, there's a lot of tech companies where founder doesn't want feedback. They don't want anybody else involved. They want to keep things kind of in the dark and then if there's a result, they give you the result. But in this case, aside from things that are highly confidential, that have to be kept, you know, secret, the, the overall kind of transparency of the company is good. I've always been happy with it. 
the Fisher Group is pretty incredible, and what they did is pretty incredible. And I think a lot of what, what some of the other kind of, what you would call, tre I would call them treasure hunters, and I think what's funny is, <laughs> Seafarer is sort of disguised as a treasure hunting company or a marine salvage company, but in reality, like I say, it's a tech company. It is a 100% tech company. And what those guys have done in the past is incredible, but it is truly based on a combination of research, luck, and time. A lot of time. I mean, the hours and the sacrifice and all the rest that the, that the Fisher Group put into their finds is mind-blowing. It's a, it's a life journey for them. It truly was. And, you know, they lost, they lost a lot in doing what they did. The difference between that and this is truly a, a matter of efficiency. So instead of, like I say, if you're, if you're looking for a wreck site, you're going to mag. You're going to use a magnetometer to look for ferrous anomalies, which are iron-bearing anomalies, to determine if there are big items that may have fallen off a ship, guns, anchors, etc., things like that. And there's a lot of iron that comes off of these ships too. But the trick is, <laughs> number one, there's a lot of modern iron off the coast of Florida, where all of these, these kind of caches are of, of value. There's a lot of modern things out there. There's a lot of iron modern things out there. And it's really difficult to, dis to distinguish those anomalies. So when you mag a site, you're going to literally end up with a thousand mag targets in you know, a several square, square mile area. And then the only way to go through that process of vetting those targets is to literally dive them, physically dive each one of them to see if you can visually see if there is something that's worth continuing to investigate that, that point. And you do that over the next, you know, 40 days or something that you have to dive in the year. And as you do that, and you see, okay, there's something here. I found, you know, an anchor, a, a period anchor or something like that. Then you've got to start the process of going around, around that anchor to see if there's anything around it that's visual. Or you've got to start all these other sort of, you know, inefficient processes of searching for, for more clues as to what happened with that wreck. It is a really long-term process. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of resources, a huge amount of cash burn to do that, and it takes decades. These, these treasure hunting companies that exist, they will literally be on a site for a decade and find you know, a handful of coins over that time. They know the wreck is there. They know the general vicinity even where the wreck is within you know, a thousand feet on other, every side. But even if you know where it is within a few hundred feet on all sides, where exactly you dig on that site to extract the value that you need to extract without disturbing the rest of it, there is no way to do that. There never has been. <laughs> the only way to do it is to start blowing holes out of the, you know, and it's just an inefficient process. Every step of that is inefficient. So the real difference is once you have a general rec site, you can scan it in a single day with our technology and know exactly where the caches of value are what exactly those are, why they're valuable, the proximate depth of them. I mean, you can pinpoint surgically exactly where, where you should be going after these things instead of floundering for a decade trying to figure out where you should be doing so. And you can do that literally in a day. So it's a pretty stark difference between what was and what is and can be into the future. There's just never been another way to do it, so they do it that way. And all, all these companies that still exist with, with leases on all these sites where there are known very valuable wrecks, that's what they're doing. <laughs> they're, they're, they're using these, these kind of older technologies and then just it takes time and it takes teams of guys and you know, there's no other way to do it because it didn't exist. This, this technology didn't exist until now. So part of the reason why I think this, this company is disguised as a treasure hunting company and in reality it's a tech company is because it does have a long history, a public history as a publicly traded company. When you look at that progression over time of the stock price, for example, you see exactly the, what, the, the result that precipitated from that business plan. This company was a traditional treasure hunting company for a decade. It wasn't until a year or two ago that they started to develop this technology. And like I say, nobody knows about it. <laughs> so. For me and for other investors that have come in recently, it's really been the perfect time to come in and start to help the development of that and foster the development of that technology because there are an unbelievable number of applications for it, not just in this space. This is just a fascinating space 
which is a byproduct of that technology and the fact that we are here on the Treasure Coast and all these caches of value do exist in, in shallow waters right off the coast here. And we're not talking small amounts of money. You're talking about bully industrial cargoes of gold, silver, other precious metals that were coming from, from the New World in the tons on a ship. A single ship having tons of gold, tons of silver. You know, the, the three ships that went down that were well known off Padre Island uh, in 1554, for example, those ships had, you know, 60 tons of gold and silver on them. And only a portion of it was, was, was taken. An 800 ton ship would have, you know, 80 tons of cargo on it. These are not small amounts that are, taking, that are being taken in each individual, in, in individual ship. And then across that, you have hundreds of these ships that were running back and forth because it was sustaining the Spanish economy at that time. And because of the inefficiency at that time, the navigation methods, all of the things that, that surround those events that cause these wrecks, there is a ridiculous amount of bullion sitting on the ocean floor right off the, off the coast. So that in and of itself is a huge opportunity and they've got great progress on that front. But there's other applications in other industries and those are even further reaching. It's just this is the lowest hanging fruit because we have these caches of value right here and because there is quite literally no competition that can compare based on the technology that we have. So I see the future as quite bright because of that.